Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? What's up guys, Evan Bond Author here, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a book review video. Uh, first one I'm uh, first one I'm doing, and if you can't tell by the screen behind me, and my little intro, we're reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark, the novelization based on the screenplay. Now that means the book did not come first, but the screenplay did. So the movie is first, the book is second. And uh, let's just jump into it. Here, Here's that book, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, shiny red cover, isn't that great? Indiana Jones right there. Awesome. I love this cover. Uh, what's cool is I actually found this at a thrift store uh, just by happenstance. I was just walking through a thrift store looking at the books and then boom this was on the on the shelf. There's actually two. I, uh, the other one was just a silver copy. Uh, I almost bought both just for the fun of it. Uh, if you see my desk tour video you know that I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan. I have a whole shrine to Indiana Jones up on top of my desk here. Um, but, uh, but yeah Indiana Jones you know, there's a lot to uh, lot to say about Jones. He's one of the quintessential heroes of our generation, if not before my generation. Um, I mean, he's brought us characters like Nathan Drake, who you know I love. He's he's based on Indiana Jones. Uh, he just really defined the adventure genre. Um, and and I don't know, Harrison Ford played him perfectly. I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if I want to see another actor take up the mantle, but. That's not what this review is about. The review is about this book. So let's just dive into it. First of all, the uh, the book was really well written. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was you know, based on the screenplay, so a lot of it is the same that's in the movie. Um, we get a lot of the same lines, a lot of the same scenes, a lot of the same, all of the same characters, really. What I want to focus on right now is the, the differences. Um, so there was a there's a few differences in this book. Um, first being uh, the the scene in the very beginning where he gets the idol. It's slightly different. Whereas in the movies, like you know, don't touch the light or don't go into the light or uh, whatever he says exactly. Not quite how it happened in in the screenplay in the book. It's actually more of a room that sets off the spike trap. So when Indy realizes the trap because he has a floor plan, he throws something into the room which sets off the trap and they realize they have a few minutes where they can run through the room before it resets. So a little bit different. Um, the, uh, the next major difference I would say is after he gets the idol and they come back and they have the whole moment where the Peruvian guide um, betrays him and he's like, toss me the idol and I'll toss you the whip. It, that happens the same, but in the movie, uh, Jones has to jump across and he grabs a vine and pulls himself up as the door is closing and, and whatever. In the book, it's not quite as, um, the, the, there's no door closing, there's no epic moment where he grabs a whip and pulls it from under the door. Um, but there is a cool moment where he, when he jumps across the ravine and he grabs hold of the dirt that's, um, that's on the other side of that little ravine. He digs his nails in the dirt and he has to claw his way through the earth. I thought that was a little bit, little bit different than just the vine. But, um, so yeah, that was just a small difference there. Uh, next little difference in the beginning is the uh, Jock's plane. It's not just a two-seater or water plane. It's, it is a water plane, but it's like a, an interior cab and all that. So minor, minor differences. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, I will talk about some of the major differences in it. Uh, well, I guess this one's still kind of a minor difference, but for me, it's kind of a big deal because... So, so Marion, one of my favorite characters of all time. She's awesome, she's strong-willed. I, I like to think she's one of the, the first strong female characters we've, we've had in movies before, um, before any of these other characters came along. Um, so she almost set the tone. But um, in the movie, when Jones shows up and her bar gets burned down and she's... She tells him when she grabs the medallion and she goes, she says something along the lines of, you got more than you bargained for. I'm your goddamn partner. Until I get back my $5,000, you're going to get more than you bargained for. I'm your goddamn partner. And she holds up the medallion. Such a cool scene. I love it. Well, in the book, it doesn't really happen that way. She just kind of says, well, you're stuck with me now or something along those lines. Yeah, very, very meh. But, um, 
And I know that could be a delivery by the actress. Maybe she said something way cooler, the director liked it better, or just on uh, just minor changes there. And I know it's a minor thing to gripe about, but I really love that line. It's like my favorite line in the entire movie. I'm your goddamn partner. It's just so good. Uh, and to not read it in the book, it that, that's a little sad. But other than that, that's not that big of a deal. But moving on to maybe a, um, a little bit more prevalent differences, um, there's a little bit of question as to how at the end of the movie and uh, Indy knows they need to close their eyes uh, and I'd say spoilers here but if you haven't seen the movie by now let's be honest you're not watching this video so Indy tells Marion close your eyes Marion close your eyes well in the movie there's no explanation for why he knows that now I am aware there's a deleted scene that does explain that however it's not in the movie so when you watch the movie there's no pure explanation for it however this book does include that deleted scene, which I really think should have been in the movie because it's it just explains how he knows. Uh, it, basically, the medallion he takes to an interpreter who reads the medallion and tells him where to place the medallion, how tall for the staff to be, and it also says, do not look at the contents of the Ark or you will die. So that's how Wendy knows, and of course when they're on the island in the book, he can't remember. He remembers there's some sort of warning, but he can't remember what it is. He's like, what, what, he's thinking, what was I told? What was I said? Then there's a blinding flash of light, and Marion says, I can't see. I can't open my eyes, or something like that. And that's when Indy remembers, Marion, don't open your eyes. Close your eyes, man. That's, that's when he remembers. So, I think that's cool. We get to learn why and how he knows. Um, I, I just, I really like that. And I wish the movie had kept that scene, but it was nice to read in the book. Um... There's another thing that gets explained, this has always been a question of mine when watching the Indiana Jones movies, was how exactly did he get to the island? Now, I know he stows away on the submarine, obviously. They show that. He shows him come up on the submarine after they take the Ark and Marion away from the pirates, and he gives him a salute and runs down the, the uh, sub. But then in the, the next scene, we're on the island, and Indy's there. And I always questioned, where, where did he go? Did he hide somewhere on board the submarine? That seems unlikely someone would have found him. Did he ride on top of the submarine? I mean, that's possible, but most times I would assume a submarine submerges underwater, as they tend to do. So why would they travel above the waves? Was the island really close? Um, you know, just... I, I know it's a minor thing to really worry about, but it's just a question I've always had, and I never really knew the answer to it. I don't think there's a deleted scene that explains that. However, once again, this book delivers on that question. Uh, what he does is, once he gets on top of the submarine, and it starts to submerge, as they do, he runs and he jumps and hangs onto the periscope, and he prays, he holds on, he hopes, and the submarine goes just below, just enough below the waves, but the periscope is about six feet up above the water. He hangs on to it, he actually takes his whip out, ties himself around the periscope, and just hangs on, and, and hopes that they don't go any further. He actually ends up falling asleep while being dragged across the waves into, until they reach the island. So, I thought that scene was really cool, because... It was just a, a small question I'd always had. How did he get to the island? Did, did he, you know, did he hide on the side? Weird, weird thing I always wondered about, and now I don't have to because the book explained it. Um, he does lose his whip in that scene, which I don't think the movie really touches on at all. In fact, if you think about back to the movie when he's tied to the statue, or rather the pole, there is no whip on him, and there's also no hat, which the book does say he loses his hat. Now that's sad, to all of you who know Indiana Jones, the hat is like, it's like Spider-Man's suit or King Arthur's sword. It's like part of him, that's his hat. And to know that during this adventure, he actually lost that hat, it's a little sad. So when you go back and watch the other Indiana Jones movies, you know that's not the same hat he was wearing in Raiders, except in Temple of Doom, because if you weren't aware, and it's a fun fact time for you, Temple of Doom is actually a prequel Two Raiders of the Lost Ark takes place a year before, um, which makes you wonder, why did Indiana Jones tell um, tell Brody that he didn't believe in all that hocus pocus, hocus pocus magical, you know, he had just dealt with magic rocks about a year before. But whatever, we're not we're not getting into that. That you know, we can debate that in the comments below if you'd like. But um, but so when you watch Last Crusade, the hat he's wearing, not the same hat. And it's kind of sad. 
But, um, but yeah, I think it's neat that we, we learned that he lost some of those essential items. Um, which brings me to another scene that's very different in the movie versus the book. Um, speaking of the island, the, uh, the scene in the movie where Indiana Jones gets up on top of the, the uh, cliff face with the rocket launcher and he looks down at the Ark and Belloc and everybody and he tells him to let the girl go or I'll blow the Ark back to God. I'm gonna blow up the Ark, Renee! And Belloc is like, oh, okay, fine, go ahead, do it, because we both know you won't. And Indy kind of just drops the RPG and he's like, yeah, you're right, I won't do that. Awesome scene, I think it really, really taught us a lot about Indy's character. Like, he's willing to do whatever it takes to get Marion back. He doesn't even really care about the arc as much. He wants Marion back, um, but he still won't just destroy the arc because it's his life's pursuit, as Belloc says. You've been in search all your life for relics like these. Throw it back to God. All your life has been spent in pursuit of archaeological relics. He's not willing to destroy them. He he can't do it. I think that was really cool that the, the villain calls his bluff and that he's like, yeah, you're right, I won't do that. And he gets captured. Now in the book, it's a little bit less cool in my opinion. Uh, he, same way as in the movie, he sneaks around in a German uniform. He grabs an RPG. And it's actually as Belloc is doing the ceremony on the island that Indy runs up the steps and shoves the RPG pretty much in his face and tells him to let them all go or he'll blow them all up and kill everybody. And there is no exchange of line like, you won't do it, you know, go ahead, whatever. He's actually jumped by a German soldier. They fight. Indy loses and then he gets him and Marion are tied up to a statue. Again, another little small difference, but in the movie he's tied to a pole, whereas in the book he's tied to a statue. I know, not a big deal. But just the little things like that. Um, and then, of course, the, the way they get loose in the movie, we don't ever really see how they get loose, but in the book we learn the arc kind of explodes everything and destroys the statue. Um, so that was neat. Last thing I want to talk about for major differences was the scene where Marion is captured by um, Belloc in the tent. Now, in the movie, it's a great scene where she's strong-willed and she has this plan to get him drunk and then attack him with a knife and leave um it shows just how powerful and strong she is but in this in the in this book based on the screenplay it's she's more of a damsel in distress he comes in she notices how handsome he is and that if he wanted her he could have her and she couldn't stop looking at him and it just did not feel like the marion that i know and love the not as strong-willed marion so i think that was a good choice for the movie to change um, because I, I, I want that Marion. I, I want Marion to be that strong-willed character. But, um, but of, all around, awesome book. I did find Temple of Doom and um, uh, Last Crusade, and I will be reading those soon, and I'll let you know what I think of those as well. And if uh, you read this book and you have anything to add, go ahead and put that in the comments below and let me know what you thought. Um, and um, I look forward to telling you my review of my next book. And... Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you like what you saw, hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to hit subscribe. If you want to learn more about me and my books, you can go to evanbondauthor.com. I'll leave a link in the description below and I'll also link my social media pages. If you want to watch more, go ahead and click the uh, links in this video. And uh, I'll see you next time.